Have you ever wanted to have a run-out gauge uh, for your ammunition to check it for concentricity? Uh, but, you know, when you look at the stuff for sale, it's like two, three hundred dollars more even to buy these fancy units where you can kind of set your, your cartridge up and, and spin it around and see if the, if the nose of the bullet is concentric or the neck of the case is, is got some wobble in it, just making sure that everything's aligned. Well, I recently came upon a need for doing that. Not for, not that I'm a, uh, a bench rest shooter or anything like that, but I cast a lot of these bullets, hundreds of uh, rounds I have of this 30-30 ammunition with uh, cast bullets and I heat treat them and uh, on one occasion I heat treated them just a little too much and they began to slump over in the oven a little bit and I didn't catch that until later and I had to discard quite a few bullets because they were a little bit bent like a, like a wet noodle. Eh? And uh, so that caused me to have doubts about the remaining cartridges because I've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, you got to have high confidence in your ammunition, especially when you're out hunting, because it all depends on uh, being able to get that performance, that accuracy that you expect. So, you know, here I have all this ammo. I need a, cons uh, a run out gauge and I'm sure not going to spend three or four hundred dollars for a run out gauge. It just uh, uh, well, I'm not a rich man, and if you're viewing this, maybe you aren't either. Most of us aren't, right? So, what do we do? Gotta, if you don't have the money, you gotta use the old noggin up here, right? So, like, what can I afford to do? What I decided to do is, I got one of these units off eBay, no, Amazon. Uh, in American prices, it's about a little over 50 bucks to get one of these things. It comes in a nice little kit like that. And uh, this is basically just your stand for, uh, you know, setting. A lot of machinists and mechanics use this stuff, right? And uh, they, it has a magnet on the bottom. And it's got a little run-out gauge. See that? So you, you can spin something underneath that needle there and then tell whether there's any variation right so that is the most essential part is this thing that pretty well you have to buy right so for canadian price it cost me 71 bucks delivered the same day that i ordered it on amazon and i'll put a link to this one on in the description of this video but uh uh, easy enough to find. There's lots of these made, and they're all made in China. They're cheapy, cheapy, but they work. So, really, for a guy like me, anyways, I don't need anything super expensive. I'm just looking to see, do I have any run-out uh, run problems on these bullets? And uh, I'm just looking for really <laughs> big, big variations, right? So, uh, I don't want to detect if I have any of these... <laughs> bent bullets loaded in the hundreds of rounds that I have cast for this. And especially in today's uh, day and age where the primers are at such a premium, you don't want to be wasting any ammunition, right? So I got, I have invested a lot of primers in these things. So, okay, so I digress a little bit, but I just want to set this up to show you why I need it. Your reasons for needing a run out gauge may be totally different, in fact, I'm almost sure they're very different, but for whatever need you have, reason you have for uh, wanting a run-out gauge, uh, everybody likes to save money, right? And you don't need to overkill it with uh, super precise technology necessarily all the time. So what I'm going to propose in this video is a very simple way to, to make your own run-out gauge using starting off with one of these simple $50 type units. And uh, so the challenge then becomes, how are you going to uh, make the cradle, basically, and get this unit all mounted together? Well, the first thing I noticed is that this thing is really heavy. So for my purposes, uh, and this is partly because, maybe I'll show you later on, I'm going to mount it on a, I have a little shelf 
on my reloading table that sits at uh, eye height. Uh, I That's where I put my uh, weigh scale on always. I think I'll be putting this up there and this, this uh, board will just fit right nicely on that narrow shelf that I have for the weigh scale. So anyways, you know, it's good to have a base and I think for the purposes of this, you can just sit this heavy thing right on the base. This is an uneven surface, so it's gonna wobble, but uh, uh, it'll be better when it's done. So anyways, you know, you got this thing, plunk it on there. I don't think you need to have a magnet. Uh, the magnet is really good for mechanics and stuff that are mounting these units on the sides of things and stuff like that, right? But uh, for us, not, not so important. So then your next challenge becomes, how do you roll this cartridge so that it's perfectly smooth rolling so that none, none of your rolling action is going to uh, introduce wobble, right? This part is critical. And you got to get it so it's going to fit with this thing here. Well, when I look at this thing, let's see. Whoop. You know, you can get this thing to line up just nicely on the center of this board. And uh, I was looking at all kinds of ideas. Huh? I tried putting in wires <laughs> at an angle as a cross to cradle the cartridge in didn't work not not it's super wobbly so I'm sitting here at my reloading table and trying to think of what to do and uh, I'm looking around and I notice I have all these cases kicking around here that are some are primed some are waiting to be uh, resized and stuff like that and, and I've got uh, a whole bunch of old brass that's got split mouths and stuff like that in a drawer and I'm looking at these things and thinking, you know, that's an actually a nice, nice uh, rolling surface. Uh, and uh, so I took a couple of these cases and I put them together. And then I put this, now in, this, in the case of a 3030 cartridge, it has a rim on it. So you're gonna have to have it a little bit past that. I don't know if I can show you this on very easily uh, but anyways you can take the, these are rimless cartridges on the bottom 243 and then the 3030 you, I did some testing by hand and you can roll this cartridge really nicely on the cradle of these two cylinders that are made out of out of uh, cases so oh that's that would actually be pretty simple. In fact, it might be better to have a smaller bearing surface and have two 44 Magnum cases with rims that have uh, uh, that are rimmed cartridges, so they stick out from the body, and have them those two rims be the rolling surface for this cartridge to roll on, and then have another set uh, pointed this way so you have a total of four four round uh, cylinders to roll your case on and still enough clearance so that the rim of the uh, well I think I, I think the rim of the uh, looks like the rim of the 3030 case is not going to contact the body but even if it did I don't think it would be the end of the world so <laughs> that's kind of seems to me like the uh, beginnings of a pretty simple solution now I think what I'll, so what I think I'll do I've got this I just happen to have this little piece of wood cut out from another project anyways I never throw anything away and this is an old uh, uh, spreader piece from a, a, a take apart a handsaw <laughs> so I dug that out that I can put this on and I think if I put this this board if I mount them on this board and I get the spacing of these cases right I'll have one set of cases here and another set pointed the other way I'm just gonna hold three here right now but that's basically gonna be my roller setup and really all I need to do 
is I think I'll just epoxy them right onto the this little board and then either with some nails or wood screws I'll attach it to this board here and I think we'll be done so I haven't actually done this yet so I'm just taking a chance here saying I think this is going to work and what this video is going to be is we're going to find out if it does indeed work and how good a result it produces so uh, hang on there let's let's get started on this okay let's see here um, I'm gonna need some glue um, what do I got here I got some I got some of this five minute epoxy so let's get this stuff mixed up okay let's put the last one on there And on there, kind of lined up. So uh, let's let this sit, and then I'm going to uh, attach it onto this board, put this thing on here, and uh, we'll see what kind of uh, uh, how well it works with the, using that runout gauge on it. Okay, Be back. We now have these cases nice and strongly attached to this piece of plywood or attached strong enough. And uh, I can take this case and lay it on there. And lo and behold, you can see that it rolls quite nicely. You gotta be a little bit, you gotta be a little bit gentle and push it in the right way, but it rolls nice and smooth, I think. But you'll see one thing that is a shortcoming, is uh, that if you're measuring the, the, let's say on the nose of the cartridge, which is what I'll probably be doing, because I'm looking for that little bit of a, a bend on it, then you're gonna wanna have this left and right position kind of locked, eh? So that it's not wandering around as you do, because this ogive on the bullet, it's, uh, it it's goes up and down, right? So we want to keep that in place. So I've got to solve that little problem. I mean, uh, this is basically the way I do all my stuff. Uh, I just kind of jump into it, not really with a completed plan, and uh, with the confidence that that I'll figure the rest of it out <laughs> when I get there and uh, really that does, it's worked surprisingly well that approach because uh, it, it is quite often only until you start putting stuff together that you start to realize uh, or see opportunities that you wouldn't have seen otherwise so so as I'm looking at this I'm just kind of thinking well I've got these pieces of rod here these are brass rods, a piece of brass rod, but uh, it could be coat hanger wire too, same thing. And uh, I think what I should do is I should make a little stop on this thing so that it comes up and then comes in towards it, maybe bends down at the end so that you don't have any rough end of the rod catching on the cartridge. So that's, that's going to be a pretty simple matter, I think, right? Let's see how this goes. Okay, nice taste, tight fit. Tight fit. Okay, let's get this guy in there like so. And now we have a nice 
see if I got it in camera view. But uh, that looks really nice, if you ask me. The only thing I gotta do is trim off that bit on the bottom here. So that's it. I don't think I even need to glue this in. And, uh, you know, <laughs> just barely enough wood at the end. But you can see, it's nice, simple. Simple little rolling block setup. I didn't have to spend two or three hundred dollars for this either. Amazing. Okay, so uh, the thing that's left then is uh, maybe I should just tack this thing down onto the <clears throat> piece of wood I have here. This is turning out actually pretty good, I think. Yeah, really good. I'm feeling good about this, folks. I'm feeling good. Okay, there's, I got marks on this board here where this would ideally sit. And then over here, I would have this. This is again, when you do stuff on the fly like this, you can kind of, you don't have any set plans, so you can say, well, you know. Maybe I should leave this thing movable? I don't know. See this? This opens it up. Okay. So I can lower this pin onto the old guy. So it just touches. If I roll this bullet really carefully, I'm getting a reliable, a reliable measurement of that old guy. Okay. So I guess I should have it so it's contacting. If I'm rolling this, I'm getting a, a good readout. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. I'm getting a decent readout. Doesn't matter uh, the exact numbers, as long as I just want to see how much movement there is. See, once it comes around, it comes back then back down so it's showing the full 360 when the cartridge is rotated 360 it comes back to where it started which is a good indicator of consistency so I'm starting to like this pretty good and I don't think there's any need really to glue this unit onto the board that way I have the flexibility of of moving it back and forth so Hopefully you've seen my thought process here. It's a little bit of getting used to it, but uh, yeah, you can you can make an accurate uh, measurement using this this uh, gauge here the way it is. So I'd say that's um, pretty successful. I'll give you a quick view of uh, how it looks on my uh, reloading bench that mentioned that little elevated table that I plan to put it on so I think that's also going to make it uh, um, less stressful to be using you know if you're going to measure a lot of rounds and want to be comfortable while you're doing it and have everything at eye level I think it's going to work a little better but uh, you can just use it just like this too so the whole thing is uh, uh, quite simple to use just be be careful not to lift this unit up while you still have this on there because this is heavy and it can easily fall off and bang up your your instrument, right? So just take care of that. But aside from that, you know, it's I'd say we, we have a nice little unit here. Did you like this video? If you did, I think you're gonna like this one right over here. So check it out. And I appreciate your subscribing if you haven't done so already. Remember to do that while you're watching this next video. Click like, it all helps us out for this channel. Catch you next time.